customers from sort of the 30,000 foot range all the way down to the detailed uh, testing of future innovations. Um, the Gen Y topic is something that's been on uh, our radar for a long, long time, but it's especially exciting and important now because at this point uh, it's getting real. And what I mean by that is that the oldest millennials right now are 35, uh, and there's a you know there's 10 or 15 years of people behind that. They're finally, I guess I would title the talk, Gen Y grows up, finally, right? And they're just now at this key age. In the next 10 years, they will they will be up to 45 years old. This is the life stage here between mid 30s and mid 40s when people get a lot more income, they settle down, and of course for, for our purposes they start to drive and to buy uh, luxury cars. And so although we've seen this coming for a long time, ever since uh, Gen we figured out that Gen X was going to be a little boring, as uh, Dmar said, uh, now now is really the key point uh, going forward. So what is the, the the question we always have when we're looking at new customer groups is. You know, where, where are they going and, and are they really different? And this is the question you've seen a lot of this in the media and from experts. Gen Y is different and some of the hype goes so far as, as if they're almost from another planet and we can't possibly understand them. So what we're trying to do is disentangle what's the same and what's different and, and of course where they're going to evolve to. And one of, the, one of the key things is to distinguish between, you know, what kind of behaviors and values are influenced just by the economic situation that you're in versus what are the behaviors and values that are going to change fundamentally over time. And I, I think we've gone too far in the direction of, you know, economic circumstances have created completely different values and so on, and I'm not sure that's entirely true. But uh, I will go through just a couple of uh, concrete things. One of the main things about the questions about the whys is, you know, are they ever going to grow up? There was even a movie, as you know, called Failure to Launch. And uh, it is true that the boomers have, or the boomers, the whys have been delayed in these adult milestones. That includes a career kind of job, it includes finishing your education, making good money, having kids, married, buying a house and all that. All of these things have been delayed, partly because of the recession, partly because a lot of them have stayed in school a lot longer and have amassed a large amount of debt in doing so. It's way up and that's a real burden when you get out of school and start to pay it off. But what we are seeing now on most of these fronts is signs that in fact these guys are launching it's delayed, maybe 35 is the new 30 or something like that, but they are starting to have children, and uh, although birth rates are flat in the US, uh, women 30 to 39 are having rapidly growing rate birth rates, for example. Uh, they are getting married, especially the educated ones are, uh, are getting married, and so the, those rates are working out pretty well. They are starting to buy houses, uh, which again, there was this question, do they just want to rent forever? They actually do want to buy houses, uh, as well as cars. And so you see all these things, this so-called failure to launch is really just a, a delayed launch. And as they move into their late 30s and into their 40s, we suspect in those kind of life stage uh, sorts of issues, they're gonna be a lot like their, their boomer parents were. So that's, that's one thing uh, we, we pay attention to a lot. Um, you know, pe people ask how are the uh, whys different? There are a couple fundamental ways we think they're different. Obviously the technology use, not all of them were actually digital natives. They were, in fact, the ones born in 1980 did not have the internet or a tablet when they were growing up. It wasn't until they were in high school that the internet sort of became popularized. But clearly they, uh, they do uh, use technology differently and more. Um, although I would say the boomers are sort of closing the gap on that. Another important thing with the, uh, with the Gen Ys is that they're much more diverse in terms of uh, race and ethnicity and so on and uh, overall much more tolerant of other ways of doing things, and so that's uh, important uh, uh, for companies to acknowledge, and it will eventually, I think, be quite important for politics. So those are, those are things, they're also much more educated in terms of how many people have a bachelor's or a master's degree, they're more educated than previous generations. Again, paying the price for that with college debt, but uh, they're, they're very savvy about uh, communication, and they're very interested in uh, authenticity in the communication with the brands and so on. So um, a couple other things, uh, we've looked at the sharing economy, and again, this is one of the things Dmar mentioned is people, they're just gonna wanna share cars and share mobility rather than owning mobility. What we actually have seen in our research is these Gen Y customers have relatively high consumer aspirations. That is, they identify with very similar luxury brands to what their parents identify with. They don't have a completely separate group of products and brands and all that. They want a lot of these things, because of they've been held back economically then, 
one way to get some of them is through the sharing economy, which is really, you know, in most cases, it's really the rental economy is what it is. Companies and business models have gotten more sophisticated about, about allowing people to have part-time access to something. But that's really what's going on, and as Steve Moore said, ultimately, with houses, with cars, with other things, we think they are, they are gonna wanna buy things and, uh, and own them permanently. Um, another, another thing we've looked at is, there's a lot in the media about how, well, all the Gen Ys wanna live in the cities. They're really gonna be city dwellers and ride public transportation and uh, end up not needing cars. Uh, the first part of that, I mean, this is largely a myth. First of all, almost all Gen Ys today, despite what you read and see, is they do live in the suburbs already. Gen Ys are overrepresented in cities like San Francisco and New York, proportionally overrepresented, but relatively speaking, that's a drop in the bucket of the total population. Almost all Americans live in the suburbs of large metro areas down to sort of medium-sized cities. There's only a couple of real cities in the United States, and you know, New York is the most prominent example, where you can actually get around on public transportation uh, in, a, in a plausible way. You can't really do that in the Bay Area. You can't really do that in many other places. So this idea of millennials returning to the city, first of all, they were never there in the first place, and the evidence that we have so far is that once they do grow up, and by that I mean marriage and especially kids, they tend to move back out of the city to the suburbs. And so we don't see a, ultimately a fundamental difference in that. Once you do live in the suburbs, once you do have kids, you have to have cars. And so we think they're not actually going to be that much different than the Gen X or the, Gen, or the, the boomers before that in these fundamental life stages and in these, in these sort of fundamental behaviors. At the end of the day, most will live in the suburbs. A good number will be married. They will have kids. Uh, you know, there'll be differences, but the fundamental things that impact our business uh, we think are going to be fairly similar. So we have to uh, keep that in mind, okay, when we talk about things like the, like the sharing economy, for example, return to the cities and all that. A lot of that is is overhyped. It's not entirely false, but it is a drop in the bucket compared to what's going on in, in the rest of uh, the society. So that's kind of the high level uh, uh, overview that I've got is that really Gen Y is growing up finally. And uh, we'll, we'll see where they end up. Uh, I'll just re remind one more thing is that uh, I lived in Seattle in 1990. That was the peak of Gen X right then. If you remember grunge and plaid shirts and these guys were all slackers and all that. Everybody was saying the same thing about Xers as they're saying about Ys now. Oh, they're different. We don't understand them. We don't know how they're going to grow up. And now where, where are, where's Gen X? We, we, we don't know. I, I suspect they're living in the suburbs, having families, and driving cars, right? Uh, that's the evidence we have. So it's something to remember, just because 20-year-olds are a little different doesn't mean they'll be like that when they're 40 or 50. So we will see. Okay.